Hey guys, we're back with Aquila versus Potato Boys. Today, joined by DM Brennan. Hello everybody. Uh, we have uh, some interesting news. Um, Team Coast lost their fourth game, which cuts them out of contention. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, Team Coast has forfeited the rest of their games today, uh, bringing up a rather unique standing because now Potato Boys are in the hot seat. If they win the next two games, they will force a three-way tie, and we will go into a strange double bracket to seed out the rest of SK Gaming, Aquila, and the Potato Boys. If they lose both games, uh, Team Coast... Uh, is still out. I'm sorry. Team Aquila, of course, of Cog and SK Gaming will face off for first and second seed. If Potato Boys wins one and loses one, the day will be over. So there's uh, a lot of things going on. All right. Well, we'll see what ends up happening with the Potato Boys. It's gonna be their first match of the day, and I'm interested to see how they approach it. The Potato Boys have a very unconventional strategy. They're sort of like Cloud Nine light. Right. They, uh, they're always kind of breaking metas and allowing Proxy to do ridiculous ridiculous things. But they won't let Dirgy just play Kabrakin. Either way, let's go into the picks and bans. He's Tequila actually OP. Like, and Dirgy is like he probably is the first time I, in I would say he's probably the best Kabrakin in the world. Yeah. Um, but Deb's going to be taken away. Um, I'm not a big fan of this ban from first seed. Deb sure. is the best character in the game. But Aquila doesn't play it. That's, they just that's don't nonsense. like Deb. That's it's nonsense. crazy, but I mean... Kanye Life is so good at Ymir, and his area's last game wasn't that good, but he's still good at it. It's just not his style. Um, Ra gets taken away, which is probably a big weight off of Gandhi's shoulders because he's getting very tired of seeing Ra carry games. Well, there you go. So, Gandhi, you can relax, man. Mercury banned away, and that's because of adapting. You yes. don't see Mercury banned that often anymore. Thor because of Repicost, but honestly, it's a hit to adapting as well. Definitely something Aquila will first pick, but... Well, we'll see what they elect to go for in that jungle. Probably not going to be a Thor. S yeah. Hey. Thor is actually banned. Nuwa. Nuwa. All I right. Nuwa. Yeah, Nuwa, uh, very, very strong character. Fire shards is a great ability when used properly. Yes. It's also... Honestly, it's not as easy to use in competitive as it is in casuals. Right. You want to use it for the reveal and getting damage at the right time. You don't want your opponents to just back off and heal up because exactly. then your ult doesn't do anything. Um, this, though, should force Potato Boys into some type of healing. Yeah. Um, Nuwa, now, if you don't have a healer on your team, Nuwa officially has the best initiate in the game at level 20 going, sure. Hey, everyone, there's a third of your health. Let's fight now. Yeah, exactly, and... That said, I mean, what healers really left? Like, Ra's off the board. There is Aphrodite available, but she's can't not pick a team Afro healer. There. They can't pick Aphrodite. They, they pick can't. Afro into Chunga, that's GG. And, and at the same time, when you pick Chunga into a weaker lane matchup, you can have a lot of trouble, especially with a jungle like Repicast, who will punish you. I mean, Guan Yu maybe, but soul lane support is not Proxy's thing in the soul lane. Right. Durgius can play it, and I say that hesitantly. So the healing option, I mean, it, they might have to just give up the best initiation in the game. That's true. Um, now, with Nuwa there, this to me forces Proxy into a tanky role. They, okay. should be, they need more frontline to be able to deal with Nuwa's nonsense. They need a way to break past Ymir into the Vulcan. They can't absorb a lot of damage. Going very squishy here can hurt them. And strangely, they're going to go into a very early pick of Agni, a character, in my opinion, who is very balanced, sure. but is not... I don't think he was going to get banned. So Arrow has two big picks. He has Vulcan. Right. And which is funny because he's up against Pretty Prime, and these this is their rival. So <laughs> both players are very good at Vulcan. Agni is actually Arrow's character. That's just his mid laner. It's what he does. Uh, similar to Boosh on Raw, except Raw's really good right now. Right. You know, once Raw goes out of the meta a little bit, Boosh will probably still play it, still probably kill people, and that's Arrow right now. Okay, fair enough. So Vamana gets taken away. It looks like uh, Aquila kind of also uh, is predicting that. Mm -hmm tanky front line. So they take away Vimana. Uh, right side, Athena will get locked in, trying to keep Freya safe and rotate to Agni very quickly. Left side, hover onto Nemesis with a lock into On Her. Now, On Her is a character that I think does oh, yeah. greatly against Freya. Sure. A great amount of damage, can shove her out early, much better lane clear, which really hurts Freya early on. Late game, Freya's going to perform a little bit better, but getting Freya to late game, ooh, with a comp that looks very squishy, a final pick of Habwa is going to be locked in. Um, oh, okay, so, so Freya is going into the jungle here. Yes, this is a jungle Freya with a Hunter Rom, which is sort of Suntouch's mainstay in that Hunter role. Think of it this way. Durgius is possibly the most peel-oriented support in the game. Sure. So if you're going to play four carries, you want Durgius as your support. Oh, absolutely. That's my justification, and I think that has to be the methodology, because going four carries is just 
fast and loose is risky. And the other thing to mention, Sun Touch, only physical damage dealer. So if he gets shut down and if Aquila realizes this, they can just build some magic def defense and walk right through their opponents. There's always something I want to point out, and mm -hmm. I have to say this. In every one of my ranked games, I have to say this on stream every sure. day. For magical is fine. For okay. physical is bad. Sure. When you build physical defense, you're not only building defense against players, but you're building it against the map, against Fire Giant, against Towers, Phoenixes, Titans, Gold Furies, Minions. When you build magical damage, it, right now it's going to be against Freya. It's going to be against Agni. But there's not a lot of strong sure. magical items in the game. You have... Bulwark, Stone of Gaia, Pestilence is not something you can pick into this team because they mm -hmm. have no healing. And then... Well, yeah. you'll still find some efficiency, but let's get right into the action. Aquila leaving the base once again on the order side, as is their preference. Ataraxia on your on her in the hunter roll. Prime, your mid lane. Vulcan Repikos in the jungle on Nemesis. Confrey, Sole Nua, and Kanye Life back on Weimer. On their final legs, we're going to check out today with the Potato Boys. Remember to put Bible Thumps on each side or it does not count. We're going to see Adapting going Jungle Freya. Proxy QQ going into kind of a normal role here with Habwa in the solo lane. Arrow going mid lane, of course, with his famed Agni. And the uh, infinitely famous dual lane of Durgius and Suntouch playing Athena and Rama. All right. Well, grouping up as five, but around the minute lane, Ataraxia moving forward in the front line. Kanye Life doesn't really have the best initiation at level one if... If Aquila can catch someone, they will get a kill, but Ymir just doesn't have a way to get in at this point. It's risky, honestly. Yeah. It's very risky, but on her at this level does more damage than any other hunter. And by a significant margin, oh, yeah. that penetration is crazy. Apollo will never get 10 hits off, but it doesn't look like anything too crazy is going to go down here. In fact, I don't know if Durgy is... Uh, really got what he was looking for over there. I don't think we're going to see an invade. I think Kanye Life's going to play this one to the to the teeth here. Yeah, so interesting from Durgius to only have one health potion right here. Says to me he's planning on recalling or just planning on playing so passive that he can dump all of that gold into an earlier Midas timing. Either way, we'll see what he elects to do. Blue buff being cleared by both teams on the left-hand side. See, this is the support build that I personally like as well. You go into hand two. Okay. 60 second timer. Use it very quickly early on. That way you can go for the, the steal. Expect Durgius in that jungle in one minute. Well, we'll see what he elects to do. On the right-hand side, red buff has been taken by Repikos there, so greedier start not getting punished for it too much. Their lane control should be good here with Nemesis and Nuwa up against just alone Habwa is actually rotating out very early as he often does is adapting. Comfrey actually missed two creeps worth of experience there putting him slightly behind and now Proxy QQ actually might have a line here. The minions down. Watch adapting on the run in. He's going for it. Gets some decent damage but he's keeping his distance. Look at that. He was too afraid of the archers to commit there even with a Habwa on his side and Comfrey guys don't forget at home those minions that cooldown timer is used like 15 seconds. Yeah, it, it very is. I mean, honestly, you got to respect minions, so going in is definitely a hard decision to make, and adapting being only a level 2 Freya, Freya is strong, but if you can't get those pulse radiates out early, you're not really doing the damage that speaks to Freya. Jumping on oh. the left-hand side, oh. roll from Sun Touch, going to avoid, but here's the freeze, Glacial Strike, only hitting for 68, because this is a level 2 Ymir. Here it comes, Hand of the Gods on the back wave, going to give more pressure right here. Actually, it doesn't look like Sun Touch was ready to go in. No. Kanye Life and Arati uh, Ataraxia oh, will be lane. pushed back, but yeah, not enough. In the middle lane, adapting, rotating over. Hey. Now out for a uh, full, a double knockback here. And it looks like just gonna back off a little bit, get some lane control turret, creating some space for Prime. I think, I, actually, Arrow's being a little bit too defensive. With the rotation coming out from Nemesis and how long she's been missing, he mm -hmm. should have known what was going on. They could have cleared that wave faster with the dash, but he played it safe. A little bit too close to the chest there, but that's okay. Uh, they're gonna be able to get two camps in the back. Uh, depending on how fast Pretty Prime is, it, this might be a really big win for Arrow. Yeah, it really could be. I mean, the share oh. is so important. And, and what Arrow does there is they clear red, then they clear, uh, clear the camp, right. and then he goes and picks up that red buff. So he gets a little bit more time on it. Which is good. Not to mention, he is not going to miss a single creep here. Uh, comparatively wow. to where we go down to Pretty Prime, did not get any uh, experience from the speed buff, did not get any experience from the red buff, did not get the mid or the back camp right there. Mid harpies are coming back up. Repikas will have a good line to him with when he uh, with how he just backed. But at the same time, that was definitely in favor of the Potato Boys on the split and a very early, very tiny lead in the in the tune of about 500 experience. We're going to see a rotation over to right side. Now, Nuwa is five, 
but there's a lot of damage coming at her. Yeah, there definitely is. She has to play very careful with the fire shards here and going to be close. able to back off in time. Yeah, adapting, just showing his face a little bit. And ganking as Freya is honestly very hard because you don't have a great oh. positioning tool. Repikas yeah. has chosen the wrong side here. It looks like Dergius will get this one for free. Actually, no, he gives one away. Yeah, slice and dice. Shield wall just didn't do enough damage at the right time. On the left-hand side, rotation out from the entire dual lane. So wow. Sun Touch getting a little bit of farm, but Aquila comes out on top here. Where was Arrow on that? I mean, even if they called for no uh, flame wave or path of flames right. or anything, he could have at least thrown an auto attack. I would out have there. just dropped the noxious fumes and be like, all right, walk through this, Don Cloud. Yeah, exactly. Please, uh, Miss Nemesis, come meet your maker. Like, exactly. She, she would have died. Er, this early in the game. Now, I'm looking at the Nemesis build, still hand one. Now, when we have seen European pro Nemesis, generally speaking, they rush sure. that hand of the gods into fist of the gods immediately. In fact, this is usually about the time. It doesn't look like they're going for that same kind of pressure, which is strange to me considering they do have the Vulcan ult available. That said, I mean, you mirror long duration on the CC, so maybe they feel like they don't need it. And True. honestly, fist of the gods isn't long enough duration to really combo with Vulcan too well. It's more of the to raw, raw thing. Yeah. yeah, the raw. I mean, raw, it's insane. And definitely something that should be done. And that's a, also a character that Prime can play, so maybe we'll see in a different match. Uh, also to mention there, Kanye Life walled off a taunt reactively, which is insane. One of the best Ymir players in the world, guaranteed. I mean, and right yeah. there it shows you it. I mean, his reactions with the character are more than just quick. They're natural. They're proactive. Exactly. He understands... He, he plays Ymir almost like it's it's himself. Like, he understands the moves, when to use them, how to use them, without having to think about it. He just understands the situations that he puts himself in and knows how to just completely take advantage of everything he does. So we're still having a little bit of a passive game. Some poke coming out in the mid lane, in the bit duo indeed. lane. But they're just taking their camps, getting their farm. Not a huge gold advantage, but experience is in favor of Aquila, and I think a little bit, uh, sorry, in favor of Potato Boys, and I think a little bit of that is just the way that Replicas plays. A little bit less of a sharing jungler. Which is not good. I mean, that's what Bumba's mask. If, if he should have, if he was going to play like this, he should have bought Monopods and built Death's Toll. Sure. I mean, right now he needs to split more because he's not only behind because he's not clearing things as quickly, but he's also going to start putting Vulcan behind him. I mean, you take a look at the board here, uh, even experience per minute, you're going to see way on top is Aki. Left-hand side, Durgius in trouble, will dash away from the Ice Shards, and that's going to be a disengage. Desert Fury used to clear a wave there, so will be down for about 90 seconds. Not sure. I think they might have had a different plan than what we saw executed. It yeah. didn't quite come together. It's like an episode of Chopper. He's like, yeah, I, 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 I tried to put the, the strange gooey duck with the cantaloupe in it. It's just disgusting. hate when that happens, man. If you ever had gooey duck, don't, don't do it. It's not, I'm not going to. I tried, man. Okay, I'll, I'll take that from you, but you know mid camps will be spawning soon right before the left by I want to call it about 10 Maybe 15 seconds, so we'll see the rotations coming out Repikas will be here Kanye Life does not have his ultimate, but it's he's a 3v3. Here, so that's not huge It's a perfect 3v3, but Kanye has the wall It looks like they're gonna trade out and just go for the one for one not get crazy the rotation coming out from Sun Touch Not super necessary <gasps> Are they gonna do this? Oh, there's words. Oh, man, that but there would have been words that would have been so hype that was crazy. I really, I'm like, why is Sun Touch? Oh my God, they're gonna go for it. But there were wards. I think they yeah. recognized the rotation. It didn't quite happen. Issue here is that Arrow is now losing experience. Uh, he's gonna miss at least three creeps going back here. Actually, me, yeah, he'll, he'll get, he'll get four in experience, oh, two in gold. And now it's going to be the red buff. We've seen this from Aquila in every game so far. They hate red buffs. They like to take them away from their opponents. And now an engage coming out. Kanye taunted damage from the Astral Barrage, but that Earthshaker will connect onto two. Uh -oh. Arrow taking some damage. Kanye with the freeze. A lot of damage coming through. First Blood's going to go to, uh, to Adapting, and Durgius gets picked off as well. Some extra trading going on, but the First Blood will go to the Potato Boys. Yeah, Potato Boys able to secure that one, and it basically nullifies the Invade coming out. Still very even game. About 100 experience, about 12 gold difference. That's crazy. At this stage of the game, it should be higher, but Aquila's over-aggression there cost him a very small but still relevant lead. Mm -hmm. uh, Arrow right now not in a perfect spot. Behind in experience, looks like he will be heading back there. Uh, you're going to see Pretty Prime doing a little bit better overall right now in gold per minute, uh, up by about 40 per minute, but in this stage in the game could be pretty big. Experience per minute, he's actually put himself Ooh, ahead as pangs. well. 
Left hand side, oh. Golger has been pinged oh, wow. out with Vulcan's turret. They can do this actually very effectively. And also Ymir with his passive. Great at taking the early gold for your is here. He's on his way, but ice shards from Ymir also very strong. Durgis will go around the backside, I believe, using his charge there. And this is just the strategic outplay gold tree. Aquila killing it with that one. Now they're going to try to get aggressed on here. I don't like Adapting's positioning just yet, but Proxy's in there. They do find a beautiful combo. And again, playing off what Kret said in the beginning, that was all about the control coming out from Durgius. The only thing to be worried about is that they're trading serious experience and damage over in the right side. I don't know about this rotation here. I think he should just let them do the damage, focus on taking the mid tower. They have to answer back. Yeah, they do. I mean, honestly, that kill was pretty big, but with the experience paying back towards Confrey, I don't want to say... It was still worth it to get that kill off the backside of the Goldfear play, but it was severely hampered by Confrey just getting free farm. That's true. I mean, that, and that's that's what it's all about, is if they take something, what can we get out of yeah. it? And Aquila was very smart there, because while they did lose someone for the Gold Fury, a good trade in their regard either way, Confrey also just sitting by himself realizing, I don't... I don't have to rotate here. What, yeah. what are they going to use me for? So an entire wave into the tower, which is huge because not only is that tower damage, but that's missed golden experience for Proxy, despite the fact that Proxy is still highest experience per minute right now. The other thing to mention is I, I feel like Prime did dawdle a little bit. He probably could have beelined his way out of there, but that's neither here nor there. Right mid camp coming up left a little bit later, and it looks like we're just going to see the trade unless Prime elects to use his ultimate and try and steal, which is an option, and he currently is looking in that direction. Oh, Proxy strangely missing that shot there. Minions coming out. Uh, nice knock up. Does he have an opportunity? Oh, no, He's in a lot of trouble and not a lot of mana. Bead's going to be used. No, ultimate knock. Oh, good. the wall. Wall and fire shards. One shot from Repikas. Going to pick that one up, and Proxy will get rotated on. And the reason that this is such a big one, Cret, is that the Gold Fury is down, so having this three-man rotation to solo doesn't hurt them. Yeah, it doesn't. And now rotating in is adapting with the speed buff. Looks like they don't, don't want to like turn this. it. Now Repikas... Great wall. And and that's one of the strongest things about Ymir, especially against a team with two auto attackers like Aram and Afreya. You can just peel by putting a wall in front of them. Where was Durgius in that engagement? I mean, this is the reason you pick Athena was the ultimate yeah. down. Yeah. Uh I don't think it was. It, it didn't seem to me. I mean, I wasn't exactly looking at it during the fight, but no looking at it now it's up and I haven't seen him use it. Well, either way, Proxy did get taken off and I mean Athena can only help. It was sort of proxy being just a little bit too far forward, not respecting the rotations or having wards either way. And I mean, part of the problem is when your team is getting left mid camp, your right side of the map is exposed and vice versa. So map pressure is a big concern at this level of play and every player needs to know where am I strong and where are my opponents strong. Now remember, everyone at home, if, potatoes, if Potato Boys loses this game, we're uh, essentially done. Right. I mean, th that's it. Aquila will go to land. SK will go to land. Potato Boys needs two wins to force a tie. In this case, it, they've got to be sweating. They're down 2,000 gold. They're down 800 experience. And you can see that their play is becoming erratic. Uh, and Whereas Aquila seems so much more together. The, the goal fury was perfect. The rotation, the solo against Proxy was perfect. And right now, it just seems like th they're splitting the camps. They're playing their normal role. But at this point, they have to get aggressive. They have to start taking risks. It, either they're going to pay off or they're going to cost them the game. But they can't play their normal route because so far, it's not working. Yeah, exactly. When you're behind, if you just sit and you wait, you're going to see Aquila just get further ahead. That's what they do. They're very good at this sort of slow, premeditated style of play. So Potato Boys are going to have to pull something. And we've seen them do it in the past, you know, try to sneak Gold Tree or Fire Giant right. and come out successful and sort of bamboozle Aquila. So they got to be thinking about that. And Durgius is honestly very good at calling those objectives. 2-2 two two right now, 12 minutes deep. Uh, Potato Boys down about 2,000 gold. And they're going to try to make a play here. You see Durgius getting kind of aggressive, but there really isn't much to do. He's going to back off. Mid camp's going to be spawning in just a few seconds on the right side. And it looks like, right. Uh, speaking of right side, that tower has taken some pretty serious damage. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on the proxy in this solo lane. Habwa just doesn't seem to have it going. And uh, so... At this point in the game, it's a small lead for Aquila. They're up about 2,000 gold, 11 minutes in. Looking to make that into more, 
But uh, let's take a look at the highlights that we've seen so far and just see how Aquila got to this point. That's right. Again, they're about 2,000 gold ahead using their first pause of this game. Uh, take a look at the positioning here. They steal away the red buff, but Potato Boys is going to get a great shot here. Going right up into the air in just a second here, you're going to watch Adapting get up and look for first blood. Kanye Life going to get just ripped away. Yeah, and that's just the power for it with the Valkyrie's discretion, the self banish, and the very high damage. So great job using that defensively and at the right time. He waited. And here comes Proxy. That wall not perfectly placed in Prime. Combo through the wall. That was a nice water spout. Yeah. Getting the kill. This was a play where Contri stays in lane, gets a little bit of experience, but Potato Boys played it well, and here's Proxy in a lot of trouble. Now, this is where things start to turn around. They dive deep. You'll see a big shot. One big one right there for Repikos, and that was right after the Gold Fury, which means even though three people rotated yeah. to solo lane, the left lane has nothing to get. You're not going to take a tower uh, from, from Rama or from on her. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Not at this stage of the game. Anyway, let's get back into the game and take a look in the middle lane. Durgy is rotating over around the backside, and Repikos forced to dash away. Can get Tommen back in. Knock up by Proxy uh -oh. is available. The water can doing incredible damage. Level 13 Habwa. Right mid camp is secured. The left mid camp... This could actually be a 5v5, but it's going to be in the middle lane as the uh -oh. Earthshaker coming through will just barely connect with Sun Touch. 530 damage, and he has to be a little bit more careful here as Ataraxia is taking the camp and will be able to secure it. Yeah, he's got it. Both camps going to be traded away to their respective teams. Diving deep, Durgius going for the taunt. Uh, looks like the Gold Fury is about to spawn, and they are going to see it. Durgius, is he, oh, is he going to call the team back? It just spawned. They're not in position. I That's don't think rough. they realize that Kanye recalled. Oh, that, that, that's got to hurt, man. That's got to hurt you. Yeah, that's one of those things where you watch the VOD and you're like, oh, we didn't realize or whatever. And, and look at this. There's a Sentry Ward now in the inventory. Uh, as Kanye Leif moves forward, he's going to be able to take this one back for free. Yeah, it should be able to Sentry that's, it. That's no hurt. problem. And, oh, man, Sentry Warding the Gold Fury is just, it's a dangerous and often depressing game. Right there, 135 gold thrown directly in the garbage as Jurgius gets baited. Speaking of baited, left side Sun Touch not in a great spot, forcing back a lot of the Potato Boys right now. This gives great line to the Gold Fury. Pretty Prime could set this up and they're gonna start it. And great timing because speed buff has just spawned so you know where the jungler is heading. Adapting will rotate back over on the left hand side. Sun Touch is in the air and looking to get aggressive here. Gold Fury at 50%. Repikos taunted very low but not gonna die. There's the Ice Shards. The Gold Fury will be secured by Aquila. Left hand side, Repikos might fall. You know, I always talk about how Athena, I think Athena is a weak character, and right there is one of the reasons that I think so. There was just no way in there. Nice Kanye. blink in from Kanye, throwing the body blocks. Q, the Whitney Houston. Yeah, oh, Valkyrie's Retribution coming through, but Nemesis is oh, such a great matchup depressing. because of the Retribution Shield and the Dash Proxy is here, impaled into a wall. Adaraxia just using his pillar to disengage for the second time in this fight, dropping it. It's a big slow, and... I mean, with level 14, he's got that max rank, so a lot of zoning control. Proxy with the no. crushing wave forward, but that could put him in a bad spot. That, and he didn't have enough damage. He should have known that. There was no way he was killing Ataraxia at that point. He needed at least two more splash applications to bring that one down. Not in a great spot. They're going to turn their sights to the mid lane. Comfrey, unafraid. Oh, wow! Oh, gets taken out. Pretty Prime with a huge shot. Pretty Prime, best Vulcan in the world after that one, and Proxy <laughs> dies to the oh, Desert Fury from no. Ataraxia. Aquila looked at their watch like, all right, 14 minutes, let's kill kill everybody, and they're going to continue with the middle tower. Now, 4,500 gold deep at the 15-minute boy. We're going to see the Potato Boys have been kind of sacked here as they're going into the jungle. It gets taken by adapting good peel from Durgius, but Beads comes out. Repikos not letting this one go for free at all. Banish going to deter. He still has the shield up. Slice and Dice needs two more shots. Not going to quite go for it. But man, they are letting their pressure be known. Yeah, I just explosively off of that Vulcan play, like, all right, we got to kill. Let's get a little bit more. And now on the left-hand side, Ataraxia going back to his lane, level 15. So even with Sun Touch, but on her is really strong right now, especially once he finishes those chin size because of the passive penetration, just amplifying the damage from the uh, chin's proc. Left side camp might be taken here by Kanye Life. Uh, right side did go to the Potato Boys. Still f a 5,100 gold difference at 16 minutes, despite there only being a two-kill difference. Now, I think this is the strength of Aquila. They play more than anyone else in the wild cards like a top-level team. Oh, because yeah. Because they take a kill, they take, you, you know, they force someone back to the base, it's a Gold Fury or a Tower, or they're pushing someone back to the base again. They're always finding how to take that mile from that inch. And right now, it's they're showing it perfectly. 
Yeah, they're playing how a team should play. They also have two red buffs on their side, so you know that invade just went down from the left. Kanye Life with the red buff, giving him, I believe, 12 magic power. But hey, that could make a difference. You never know. Hey. Uh, bottom side, we're going to see Repikaz has uh, went back to the base. He's going to be jumping back, taking a look at the build, going into what could be Magi's Blessing. We have seen a few people build Hide of the Urchin on her today. Mm -hmm. uh, more than likely, though, it, it should be the Magi's. I mean, keeping her safe is such a, a bigger play at this point. Y using that for CC immunity and using beads for cooldown as well as CC immunity to keep that shield off cooldown as much as possible. I mean, honestly, Repikaz can be a support nemesis in this Ooh. game because you've got Ataraxia doing well. You've got the uh, Vulcan from Pretty Prime that has been on point all day. Blinking on the left-hand side, Suntouch, immediate beads, nicely played, but the Earthshaker oh will God. connect again. Jumping in, kill with the Disperse, no stolen by Repikaz there. Durgy is to the wall from the Impale and likely going to go down as well. Forced back under that tower, uh, under the inner tower, and the outer tower will go down. And look at Comfrey just split pushing the entire time, making sure his team just has that unique advantage. And taking a look at the board, we still have an ultimate from Kanye like for zoning potential. Now Proxy's going to turn his sights, but he realizes he can't fight this. Comfrey will not only escape, but help his team aggress towards the left tower. The tier 2, of course, worth 1,500 gold. Now they dive in deep. I don't think they have the damage here. Yeah, Repkos forced out, though. Arrow under tower seems to be safe. Ooh. Valkyrie's Tradition coming through, and Kanye should fall inevitably. There it is with the Water Spout. Probably should have saved that move, but we'll see. Pretty Prime backing oh, off. His why? backfire should be off of cooldown. Nice impale there, and that's going to be the disengage. Not so clean from Aquila, but they got out of the bad spot. They at least are trying to continue that route. Uh, Durgy is strangely backing off. Pretty Prime's yeah. aura was just too strong right there. Level 17 uh, puts him ahead of pretty much everyone else on the map, of course, except for his teammate, Confrey. Arrow right now, level 15, very far behind. Well, the other thing to mention is that you said Potato Boys had to do something crazy, and that's how they played that fight. It was an Athena ult off of the Agni dash that started it, which right. honestly is very strong. If you dash in and drop the stun, the ult arrives. So you can do a lot of damage there, and it gave them the upper hand when, honestly, I mean, 6,000 gold down, 5,000 experience at the 19-minute mark is incredibly difficult to fight 5v5. Well, this is what we should be seeing from the Potato Boys. They need to go for the crazy plays because yeah. that's what Athena does. I mean, that's the strength in the character. She gives you 25% damage reduction so you could dive deep and lay down the law. And so far, we have seen that used effectively one time, and it's 19 minutes into the game. That is a 90-second cooldown. That should be used almost on cooldown every time. You know what I love to see is the on-timer gold, gold Fury, but the turret was down just waiting for it to spawn. There's the wall. There's Got the it. pillar. There's no way in. I've had that happen to me before where there's just a wall and an honor pillar, and you're like, oh, great. I can't even come close to try and contest. And if, if even if Freya were to try to go crazy and use her ultimate or Rama would try to go up, I mean, the, they couldn't put enough damage out. Yeah. If they dived in, they just would have died. So right there, Potato Boys really are having a hard time with Ymir. I think Kanye Life is really showing the strength in the character because he is using Ymir far better than Durgius is using Athena. Yeah, I, th I mean, Athena just hasn't really been used for the global presence because Potato Boys have always been on the back foot, but ganking in the middle lane is adapting, has a nice angle on Prime, but Primes can go exactly where he needs to. Great Aegis as well, just to immune some damage onto Proxy with the Divine Judgment and burst it down super fast. Earthshaker will not quite connect the way it needed to, but Kanye with the Ice Shards going to slow the team down. Perfect Disperse, and this should be a nice chase. And look at Ataraxia there. Doesn't immediately go for the closest target. He separates himself from the pack just to get the damage on Athena. Knows that he doesn't need to kill Durgius. Durgius is not doing any damage at this stage in the game. The ultimate's not helping anything, even though, even if it wasn't on cooldown. He goes for the carry. Forces into the ultimate, adapting, who is now forced back into the jungle to go farm. I mean, there's nothing that she can do. Whereas Ataraxia, still with a decent amount of health and lifesteal, can continue pressure on the map anywhere that he pleases. And the other thing to mention, right, is one of Athena's strengths is she can dash in and preemptive strike. So she has an engage and then a CC in her kit. And usually you need more of like a blink coming out from uh, from a standard support, uh, Ymir, for example. So we haven't seen that. We haven't seen the dash taunt come out repeatedly. And part of that is the Agni. I feel like there's just not enough synergy between these two characters. When you can dash taunt and then follow up with like a Kakulkan uh, ultimate, that's a lot stronger. Speaking of other characters, if Durgius picked a Bracken here, I think this would have been different. He's not, I, 
He's not using the global presence. Yeah. He's trying to play that peel game, and it's much easier to peel with three forms of CC and a wall uh, than it is with one form of CC, a kind of maybe slow on one person, yeah. and an ultimate that you're not even using. Yeah, I mean... Well, we'll see. I mean, he does have the shell that's looking pretty good in the middle lane. Dash comes out from Dirtius. Could put him in a bad spot as Kanye blinks in, finds the double freeze into the Earthshaker, into the Divine Judgment. Great Aegis from adapting. Dirtius is destroyed, but that Freya died so fast. I'm not even sure what happened. Prime. This, this is FG. There should be no other thought in their mind than let's go for Fire Giant. They don't need the gold. They're already up 8,800. There it is. They don't need the experience. They're already up 8,500. But there's no hand three ready to stop them. Looking across the board here, the only hand of the gods are currently respawning. This will be an absolutely free Fire Giant unless somehow Arrow and Proxy QQ find a way in. But with that health bar, I don't even see Arrow making it inside the lair. Yeah, uh, Wall comes out just oh, to zone geez. off. Proxy forces his ultimate if he wants to contest at all, but there he lands. Nice speeds, used preemptively. Desert Fury, not quite going to get the kill, but Repikos with the slice Rip. of dice will secure it. Now Dirgius dashes in and taunts, but he's got no follow-up in turning on the back line to Proxy. He will fall as Prime gets the kill. Confrey very low, taken down by Arrow. Yeah, but Arrow might trade this one out here. Double dash going to be good. Actually, pretty prime with the fadeaway shot right there. Going to pick that one up. 11 to 4, and now 10,000 gold in the pockets. There's no way that they can be threatened at this point. They don't even need Confrey. Uh, with the amount of damage that Ataraxia can put onto this tower, especially with Repikas backing him up there, and they still have pretty prime going. The fire giant buff augments the damage to the objectives. This one's going to be free going into the mid lane. Oh, wow. Adapting. Gets completely stuck between a rock and a hard place. Not Quite dead yet with the Vox Dressing. Durgius has the well time peel, Rip. but Repikaz will find it off of the slice and dice. And now Mid Phoenix it? goes down probably the outer towers as well. Uh, they're kind of splitting up here. It looks like they might just want to back off. Uh, not sure what Kanye life is. Oh, going he wants for. red buff, I think. Is he just going to take a mid camp and then back? Oh, That's okay. Or rather, a back camp. That's so greedy. Oh, Durgius could have spotted and stopped him if he knew he was there. That's got to hurt. He'll watch that replay yeah, and be very upset. Like, uh, but, I mean, honestly, with the wall and the jungle and his blink back up, I think he still would have been able to get away. It would have bought time, which is definitely valuable. Now, red buff is being defended by Durgius. This is actually important because at the 24-minute mark, when you start to have a mage such as, let's look at Arrow with 220 magic power, well, this is worth 40 and... Well, actually, 50. And that is uh, actually a lot. That's Divine Ruin's magic power value. <laughs> That's right. So, Pret. What's up? Potato Boys needs to win this game to go to land. Right. Your Potato Boys. Yep. Fire Giant's down. Phoenix is down. They still have about two and a half minutes-ish on the Fire Giant. And you have a Habwa who's not fed. What do you do? You wait. You pick a point, And then you just go completely ham. You all in as hard as possible because your only chance is to somehow miraculously win a team fight and turn the game around. It's possible with the lineup that the Potato Boys have drafted, they do have a ton of damage. Um, look at the carries. I mean, Freya, Rama, yeah. Habwa, Agni from the back. The issue is that they're very squishy, and Durgius is not peeling. He did not pick a god that can really help them with this format. Oh, they're not even grouped up here. This Phoenix is going to go down for free. Yeah, I mean, Suntouch on the right-hand side, just a little bit too far. Adapting, can't quite get the best angle here, but the wall from Kanye not really blocking off the rotation. Durgius bursted down very low, just to 40%, but he's still going to dash in, find some decent damage, good beads, forced out by Repikas. Now fire Bang. shards. Durgius is going to fall. Gets the ultimate effect onto Arrow at the very least. So that's something, but the Phoenix is still gone. I think that's kind of the word I would use as well. Least. As uh, we're going to see the Potato Boys lose another Phoenix. Backdoor protections removed once again by those minions. Fire minions streaming into the base through the middle. It looks like they're going to play the safe game. What we should expect here is that they're going to pick up the tower, go for the Phoenix. If they get the Phoenix and one pick, they're going to go for the end. If they don't get a pick plus the Phoenix, likely they're going to wait out the Fire Giant. I mean, just what it comes down to is Nuwa minions are so great for this. Yes. It's deliverable anti-backdoor protection, some extra minions. Sure, you can tank it as Edrix is doing there. Adapting will be forced into an Aegis. Kanye Life just taking that one for free. And then forcing out the Valkyrie's discretion as well. Repikas could get turned on, gets a nice double dash, will be low, taunt back in, finds Kanye as well as Adaraxia gets a solo kill onto Suntouch. Oh, Dirge is turned around upon, but Adaraxia going ham up against Proxy. 
Yeah, Proxy. Proxy. Yeah, he's not going to find it. Proxy gets picked off by Oh, Ataraxia! I don't think it's going to be enough. Even with Arrow getting that, they have four people right here. Not to mention, Adapting's down to one hit. Repicost dives in, finds the kill. One person separates, or rather two people, as we do get a respawn of Durgius, but I really just don't see this one happening. Yeah, there's just a lot of damage to dump on this uh, Titan, especially with the turret from Vulcan essentially being an auto attacker on a mage hitting for 222. The Titan is down to just 10% health, and it looks like Aquila will go to Cologne. That's it, guys. Locking it in. Third COG team going to be going to regionals. Uh, first, of course, for Europe, Aquila locks themselves in, and in fact, actually locking in SK as well. We That's have our true. two teams. The only difference here is that SK is not locked into first seed anymore. Correct. They are right now technically uh, tied with one, one I think, win ahead, mm -hmm. right? So if SK is able to defeat the Potato Boys, it's going to tie them. If they lose to the Potato Boys, Aquila will actually come out as first seed. Yeah, and then they would be facing Cloud9 versus the second seed of the wild card, which will face Team Solomid. Team, look at the stats of this game. I mean, Pretty Prime has just been playing an insane Vulcan all day, actually able to outdamage Nuwa, which is, Nonsense. let's be honest, pretty impressive. But let's take a look at Pretty Prime's Vulcan in the middle lane. Such a great player here. With the uh, great aim from Magma Bombs as well, blinking in Earthshaker. Boom. You know, I think when, when this Vul this iteration of Vulcan came out, he was pretty good. And then a week later, everyone kind of realized that he was terrible because there's no way to hit that ult until you put him on a team with players that you trust, mm -hmm. people you can communicate with, and supports like Kanye Life, who set up that ultimate every single time. Pretty Prime taking top damage honors in that game and really skyrocketing that mid lane after losing in the beginning because he wasn't getting that split. And I think that's something they're going to have to work on going to land. There has to be more communication between Pretty Prime and Repicost because they have a whole new brand of opponent when they go to Cologne. That's definitely true. I mean, honestly, throughout the Challenger Cup and even last week's wildcard, we were sort of waiting for the real Vulcan from Prime. We saw it right. every so often. But those past three games, actually writing the textbook of how to play Vulcan, Pretty Prime, unbelievable. Aquila, unbelievable. But the Potato Boys aren't done yet. We'll see how they fare against SK Gaming in our next match, so stick around.